Bonjour and welcome to another video by Cece's Creations. My name is Cece and today I color. In my last coloring video I showed this stamped image that I had colored and asked you to guess what type of media I used. Well, most of you have guessed that it was done on watercolor paper, but nobody was able to identify the media. Here's what I used. Water-based markers, the Dove Blender, and Stampin' Up! Blender pens. Now, why did I use that uh, type of coloring? Well, I wanted to find a way to achieve cool highlights and shadows with water-based markers because I realized that I have a good collection of these markers, as many of you may have. Also, not everyone has access to Copic markers for whatever reason, and one of my goals this year is to use a lot of what I have on hand, and my poor water-based markers didn't get a lot of love in, so hence this tutorial. Let's talk about the blender pen or markers. The Duff blender pen is great for two reasons. It is refillable, and the tips are replaceable. One thing that I noticed, however, is the Dove Blender Pen breaks down the pigment of your markers quite a bit. It also leaves a sticky residue on your image, but it disappears when it's completely dry, so that's not an issue. As for the Stampin' Up! Blender Pens, well, they come in sets of threes and blends just as well, but it retains a lot more of the pigment of your markers. However, they are not refillable. Another marker that I've experimented with is a Tombow N00, which is not identified as being a blender, but it works beautifully with Tombow markers. I don't have a lot of those markers, so that's why I'm going to go with the Dove and the Stampin' Up! blenders. I've also noticed that the weight of the watercolor paper that I use has an impact on the blending. I have in my stash a 90 pound weight and the 140 pound weight watercolor paper. Now I do prefer the 90 pound weight just because the finished blending looks a lot smoother. However, I was able to achieve some interesting textures with the 140 pound weight, so it all depends on what you're looking for. Another thing that I should mention is that when you use this technique, it is wise to work in small sections at a time. This is very important. And while I was trying out my different markers, I also realized that it is best to prep your paper by scribbling with your blender pen one section at a time again before you even start adding your lightest color. I think what it does is that it seals the paper a bit, if that makes any sense. When you add the color right onto the paper without prepping with the blender, the ink gets absorbed because the paper is so porous and then the blending becomes almost impossible. Now, I will admit that this technique is not easy. It truly really is not, but it is achievable with practice and you get to use your water-based markers, so that's a good deal. Before I get to coloring, I wanted to show you two swatches I made using the two different kinds of paper I have. And I found that this was very useful to me. So you might want to do that yourself, experimenting with the different markers you have and the blenders. Another thing I needed to mention is the type of ink you use to stamp your image. Usually when I stamp for coloring, I use the Memento Tuxedo Black ink, which is water resistant. However, you see here a sample I used to scribble on and to clean my blenders. And if I zoom in close, you'll see that the ink has migrated or bled. And that is even after I use my heat tool to set it. So my suggestion is that uh, you use stays on ink for this type of blending technique. So at this point, I think what I'm going to do is make two samples, one with the 90 pound and one with the 40 pound watercolor paper. And I will show you the difference. The other thing also that I think I'm going to do, and I'll refer back to my chart here, I'm going to use the Dove Blender Pen for most of my coloring. If I feel that it needs more darker values on the coloring, I'm going to go back with my Stampin' Up! Blender Pen over top of the Dove Blender blending <laughs> that I did on my images, if that all makes sense. But I think it will come even clearer once I start coloring and you guys can see how my blenders and markers react. With all this said, let's get coloring now. <laughs> This is a 90 pound weight and I think I'm going to start with her hat. I'm just going to cover my surface with the blender. The I'm using the Dove Blender Pen. So I'm just going to cover the hat or half of the hat. Let's just do this. Let's just do half of her hat. 
and then I'm going to use four different kinds of markers for this. I'm going to use the Vanilla Cream. This one is from Close to My Heart. I didn't have an equivalent in my Stampin' Up! stash. My second color will be Creamy Caramel, Close to Cocoa, and Early Espresso. I've already laid down a coat of my blender pen, and as you can see, it's shiny. This is uh, proper to the Dove blender pen, not the other ones. I haven't seen it with the other ones. And I'm going to use my vanilla cream and cover most of the area where I've gone in with the Dove Blender. Got little foofies here, sorry about that. I'm gonna give it a good coloring and I'll smooth out some of these areas just to erase the marks. And now I'm gonna go with my creamy caramel and I want to give um, the um, illusion that there's a kink in here in the hat so I'm just going to lay down the darkest not the darkest but a little bit darker color here and blend it out and as you can see I barely touch the paper it really that's one of the things that I like about the Dove Blender pen is that it really blends smoothly it blends a lot, but it does blend smoothly. Now, as usual, I have a scratch piece of paper so that I can remove the excess color. And now I think I'm going to uncap my two darkest colors just so that I it can go quickly about it. And I'm not sure if I need to lay down another coat of uh, blender pen, but I just did. We'll see how that reacts. very washed out. This is one of those uh, instances where I might go back with my Stampin' Up! blender pen and do the finishing touches. Now this part is very very saturated with the markers and the blending solution so I think I'm gonna leave it alone for now and I'm going to move to another area. One thing that I've noticed, and I don't know if you're like me, laying out my feelings out there for you right now, but I always hesitate when I first start coloring an image. And as I progress throughout my coloring, I get more confident about it and it shows in the coloring that I do. So this is my first side. It's a little warped. That's a good indication that it's, it's very wet. So I'm going to leave that alone for now. I'm going to move to the other side. So I'm going to again put that blending solution all over here. I'm going to leave that uncapped and I, ch I think I'm going to uncap all my markers. That way I'm ready. They won't dry out for such a short period of time. So I've got all my markers here ready. So I got my vanilla cream again and This is a very light color, so I'm not being um, overly particular with it. So this is my Creamy Caramel. Now we're moving on to Close to Cocoa. And I'm not going to put as much, although it seems to be blending quite a lot. Yeah. All right. Now, the other thing I forgot to mention is when you lay down your color, the first color obviously is going to be all over unless you want to leave a white space like I did here. Then the second color, you'll not go as far as your first color. And when you blend, you won't blend from the beginning here. You're going to catch here. I'll, I'll do another layer just to show you. So um, this is my close to cocoa. Yeah. And I'm not going to go here to blend it out. I'm just going to catch the edge and bring it slowly back up. I don't think the flicking motion works with watercolor paper and water-based marker. I think you do need to um, go in circular motion, which is something I'm not used to because when I do Copic coloring, I do need um, I do the flicking motion as well in my blending. 
So this is my dark dark value. It's early espresso and I just kind of dab it or tap it on my paper. And I also dabbed with my blender pen. Now, again, this is very saturated. We're going to leave it to dry right now because I, I don't want to leave these parts like this um, light. But I'm going to leave that area alone. I just wanted to pause here and show you why I love that Dove blender pen so much. For one, it's refillable. And here's that blending solution that I bought quite a while back. It's called Dove Blending Medium. This is the format that I have. I'm sure it comes in different sizes. But basically when you open it up, you've got that red cap inside. You need to remove that. And then you replace that spout here. You open this up and you open the cap at the, at the end of your marker and you just shake a few drops. I don't want to open it now because the first times that you open it it's quite um, tough to open it like use a plier or some, try to wedge something here in between but it does open and that's the way you're supposed to do it and I just refilled it don't refill it too much because it's gonna leak at the tip here and if you open it up over your coloring you're gonna blend all at once <laughs> yeah I speak from experience. These are the tips. So that's the second reason why I like it so much. These tips here are replaceable. You just take a pliers or whatever and then you just pull on it. There's the tip. Replace it by another by just pushing that in. And there you go. Obviously uh, allow some time for the liquid to get to the tip. One thing I forgot to mention also is that you can repel some of the ink if you think that you've gone too far with your dark color. Just use your blender pen and start from the opposite and then just flick and it's going to push back the ink.
I wanted to tell you something that I keep doing and I should know better. I wanted to fix this what I consider too dark of a shadow on her arm right here. When I did this I picked up the wrong color so now she's got kind of like orangey yellowish arms and her face is very pink. Word of advice when you're done you're done and even if you've done something that you want to fix or something that you think would be better looking if you add to it don't just don't <laughs> leave it alone except those little flaws because that's what makes it handmade so there's my finished marcy i quite like the way she turned out as i promised in my video i made another image as you can see the finished blending is a lot smoother than this one here which was done on 140 pound weight now this one has a totally different look and depending on the look that i want i might reach for the 140 sometimes just because i need more texture for instance marcy's hat looks to me a lot more interesting on this one than on the 90 pound weight it almost looks like a fur hat I'll zoom in again you see all that the texture of the paper really is coming through there's a lot more fibers on the 140 pound weight and the other thing too that it does is that it encourages more pilling than the 90 pound weight so so you have to be a little bit more careful when you use the 140 pound weight I find one thing that was helpful to me was allowing different sections to dry Let's say, for instance, I was doing the hat and then I let it dry for a little bit and then I moved on to the boots and then I came back to the hat to do more blending afterwards. So my card bases for these two cards was done by using this circle scallop die by Sizzix. I just cut out some circles with my trusty colossal system, which I know is ancient, but I absolutely love it. I still use it quite often. I, I wanted Marcy to sort of look as if she is sitting on a wall. So this piece here is mounted on foam tape. And then this part as well is glued to my card base on foam tape. I added some stickles on her button for this one. Put a bit of glossy accents on the monkey like the other one. Background clouds on these ones I got from this set by La La Land Crafts, which I absolutely love, are these ones here. And I also noticed, this is so fun. I don't know if you guys, okay, let me let me grab the other one. This, this is the Cheeky Monkey Marcy. So there's a QBR code inside the packaging of each of the La La Land Crafts stamps. So if I grab my phone and using the QBR reader, and I zoom in on this, Look at this. You get the list of the colors that were taken for the sample of the packaging. Isn't that neat? I just love this. And then you can save it and you can refer to it um, whenever you want to. So I just thought that was a neat thing that La La Land did for their stamps. I also used these little clouds here. I just added some buttons. I added this sentiment because I wasn't quite sure what to do with this card. Like it's a girl with an umbrella. It's raining. I don't usually send out spring cards so I decided to come up with my own sentiment so I printed that on my computer and it says even when it rains and then inside, I just nestled a few clouds and I wrote, you managed to make me smile. So these are the cards I made with this technique. I hope that you'll try this. I know it it looks complicated, but it really isn't once you get the hang of it. And once you've actually experimented with your own stuff, you'll find a way that is really comfortable for you. And I just thought that it, it, it was just another way to shade without having to invest in Copic markers for those of you that are not ready to do that so i thank you for watching as usual if you have any comments or questions leave them in the comments section below and i will see you soon bye